Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Ranj. I'm a children's doctor and a TV presenter. And I've teamed up with Amazon and Magic Breakfast to help bring some Christmas cheer to children across the UK. The Very Important Breakfast Clubs, or VIB Clubs, are a chance for us to teach children a few new skills and bring a bit of sparkle to their day, alongside their all-important breakfast. So today, I'm going to tell you about your brilliant brain. Yes, the next 10 minutes or so are going to blow your mind. Get it? Anyway, make sure you're sitting comfortably, watching closely and listening intently because we are going to talk about some pretty cool stuff. But before I carry on, um, I think I need to look more the part, right? Hang on. Now, if we're going to understand how our brains work, we need to know what they're made of. That's right. It's time to build a brain. And here's one I made earlier. Ta-da! Well, I didn't really make it, but this is a model of what your brain looks like. It's a pinkish, grey, squishy blob that sits inside your head, a bit like this one, but actually yours is a bit bigger. It might not look like much, but this is your body's own supercomputer. Not only does it control what you do and think, it's what makes you, you. But did you know that your brain is actually around three quarters water? That's right. Imagine this is roughly how big your brain is at the age of five, this jug. And this is how much of it is water. And that's why it's so important to make sure you drink enough water every day because it helps your brain to work properly. The rest of it is made up of fat and protein. And these are really important because they are what make your brain cells, which hold all that water in as well as other important stuff. Yes, your brain is actually made up of lots of tiny cells called neurons. In fact, there are around 100 billion of them all squished up in there. I know, that's pretty amazing. Neurons are nerve cells that carry and store information. And these cells are grouped up and organised into different areas of your brain. And each part does a slightly different thing. Let me show you now. As you can see from this model, the different parts are actually called different names. And here are just some of them. First of all, right at the front, we have the frontal lobe. And this is where you do all your important and clever thinking. It also controls speaking and movement. Then moving back, you have the parietal lobe. This is the bit that senses the world around you. For example, when you touch something. Moving a bit further back, you have the occipital lobe. And this is the bit that deals with seeing and eyesight. And if you can see just inwards a bit there, you've got the temporal lobe. And from the outside, that's that bit just there. This is the part that's in charge of things like hearing. And right at the back, down here, you've got the cerebellum. This part helps with movement and balance. And last but by no means least, we have the brainstem. The brainstem looks after everyday things like breathing and your heartbeat. This is also the part that is connected to your spinal cord, which runs down your back and sends nerves out around your body. There are lots of other important parts too, but you can go and learn about those in your own time if you fancy. In fact, you could also go away and learn about how your brain changes over time. Did you know that your brain actually starts off as a tiny little tube? That's before you're born. And this thing grows and folds up to eventually form your brain. Then when you're a child, your brain rapidly grows in size so that by the time you're around six years old, it's already 90 to 95% of the size it's going to be when you're an adult. What happens then, you say? Well, it can't just stay like that forever. Once it's grown, your brain then starts to tidy itself up so that bits that are important are kept and bits that aren't needed are thrown away. This starts at the back and eventually finishes at the front when you're in your 20s. 
And then when we get old, our brains get old too and they shrink a little bit. Whilst all that is happening, it's doing all of the things that you do every single day, like thinking, dreaming, feeling, controlling your body, learning and making memories. Told you it was pretty cool. But there are some other really amazing facts about it too. So I think it's time to bring on the Brain Busters. Brain Buster number one. Your brain is all folded up, which is why it's got all of those creases on the outside. And that makes sure that it can contain a lot of material, but not take up too much space. If you unfolded your brain and laid it out flat, it would be about the size of a pillow, but as flat as a pancake. Brain Buster number two. The neurons or nerve cells which make up your brain carry electrical information, just like tiny little wires. This information can travel at speeds of up to 150 to 250 miles an hour. That's faster than your car. And Brain Buster number three. Unlike some other parts of your body, if your brain gets damaged, it can't repair itself. However, it can sometimes rewire itself and another part might take over the damaged part's job. This is something we call neuronal plasticity. But I wouldn't count on that ability too much. It's not always that reliable, I'm afraid. And that's why it's so important to look after your noggin. So I think now's probably a good time to talk about the things that you can do to look after that brain of yours. You may have heard of brain food, but to be honest, there is no such thing. Sorry, there isn't a single food that is going to make you clever. However, if you eat a variety of different things to make sure you're getting all the right vitamins and minerals, and drink enough water every day, you can make sure that your brain has all the things it needs to do its job properly. Just like this stuff over here. The one thing that will definitely help your brain to work better though, is sleep. Sleep is important for our brains and our bodies. It's when we do most of our growth and repair, and that's why we sleep so much more when we're younger, because our brains are growing. Sleep is also the time when our brains clean themselves up and make memories, so it's important for learning too. And here's another really important tip. The reason your brain is inside your skull is actually to keep it safe. Your skull is like your body's own helmet. However, sometimes you can still hurt your brain if you bump your head badly, which is why protecting your head at important times is a really good idea. The other way to nurture your noggin is to look after your mental health. And that means looking after the way your brain works. For example, taking time to do things that we love and enjoy is really important for our mental health. Getting outdoors, spending time with other people safely, and volunteering to do things which help others or make you feel good are also really great ways of doing this. But if you're struggling with your thoughts and feelings, or if you've got any worries about your brain or mental health, it's really important to speak to a grown-up, such as a family member, a teacher, a doctor or a nurse. Remember, we all go through difficult times sometimes, and speaking to others can really help us get the help we need. In fact, if you're ever feeling stressed or anxious about something, and let's face it, we all get this sometimes, you can even try something called mindfulness. Mindfulness is a brain exercise that can help us to calm down and think more clearly by slowing our thoughts down. Here's a really quick and easy mindfulness relaxation exercise that you can try for yourself. In fact, why not give it a go now? First of all, sit somewhere quiet and comfortable. That's it. Then close your eyes and just think about your breathing. Try to calm your breathing down by imagining your breath coming in and out of your body as a different colour. I like to imagine it as a warm golden glow when I breathe in and a cool blue when I breathe out. Now do this for just a few minutes and then open your eyes. You should already start to feel more relaxed and calm. 
If you find yourself feeling stressed out a lot, then definitely have a chat to a grown-up too. And there you go. That's the end of our big brainy lesson for today. I hope you're feeling a little bit cleverer now. And the next time you learn about the brain at school, you can tell your teacher and classmates all about it. And don't forget the tips we've talked about to look after your amazingly brilliant brain too. In fact, you can start doing that right now. Thank you all for watching and a big thank you to Magic Breakfast and Amazon for asking me to be part of the launch of Very Important Breakfast Clubs. They've delivered more than 2 million healthy meals to children this year alone. And I'm happy to be helping even in a small way this Christmas. So have a good day, everyone, and keep being awesome. Bye for now.